Hello there, this is Katsu, and uh, in this new series that I wanted to start in this year, I wanted to talk about uh, some of uh, the instruments that uh, I use, uh, explain some history, how I use them, show you maybe some techniques. This may not strictly be a tutorial, but you can treat it as such if you please. So, And uh, I couldn't start with anything else than probably my favorite drum out of my entire collection and that is the frame drum. Uh, I personally even sometimes call it the percussionist lyre. Why? First, because of the repertoire. Uh, as you may notice, I play on this many old songs, uh, medieval-ish stuff. Mm, not, on, not only, but for most of the time. Uh, so you know, stuff that's commonly also played on uh, on a layer, uh, but also it's the way you hold it. I mean, at least th this one, because there are many different versions of frame drums. And, you know, you hold it here uh, by the by the arm on your side, you know, a bit similar to the ancient Greek layers. Uh, and how does that work in general? Well, First of all, like I said, there are many different variations of a frame drum. Probably, probably majority of the cultures around the globe has their own version, and this is why I don't call it a bodron or anything because, or however this is pronounced, sorry, Irish people, um, because the the thing that I own here is not a bodron, and I don't want to talk about bodron specifically. Bodron is like a one type of the frame drum. Uh, it's usually smaller than this one about 14 inches across uh, it is very deep as of a frame drum uh, as far as i know they are like six inch deep or something and they have a reinforcement here on the rim that the player also can play on this one is uh, this is by remo by the way and uh, this is labeled as the renaissance drum uh, it's 16 inches across uh, and it's very thin as you can see it's uh, two or two and a half inch uh, uh, mm, deep so and this is very uh, well maybe not very thin but this is a typical for a frame drum uh, and uh, yeah so the board run is one variation there's also uh, also uh, of course i was talking about the irish board run there is also a celtic board run which is much bigger it's 20 to 22 inch across uh, and usually features a, features a crossbar in here to hold that as you can see i don't have but uh, to how the f uh, those drums are held in a while. Uh, there are also Native American uh, style of frame drums in which the skin goes around uh, the rim. If there's uh, not rim, the frame uh, goes here in the back and is uh, tied together by uh, straps or strings or stuff like that into kind of a um, spider web pattern. Uh, but I also seen uh, drums I don't know if they are really Native American style, but they were definitely inspired by them because the skin was also going around. Mm, and in which stripes were uh, twisted together uh, into also a cross pattern. Uh, and uh, out of other vari variations, the similar is Latin American Pandero, but this is more of a tambourine with a membrane, so to speak. And because they have like a regular, you know, drum uh, drum hoop uh, around them. But there's one drum that's very similar to them that is actually in the frame drum family. Uh, this is called uh, Bemben Sekinove in its native language. It can be translated to jingle drum or something like this. This is basically a frame drum with tambourine jingles on its uh, on its frame in here, which makes it, makes it basically a uh, overgrown tambourine or a pandeiro. And as I said, you can find frame drums in many different cultures. I was talking about Native American drums, I was talking about Latin drums, uh, about uh, the Slavic drums uh, with the jingle, uh, the jingle drum, the ball drums that are Celtic. But there, are, uh, but I know that um, those uh, those drums are also very widely used. Maybe not widely, but they are used uh, in the Middle Eastern um, or maybe even somewhere else in the region um, under various different names uh, I heard about Tars uh, about uh, Ben Bendiros no this is Latin uh, Bendiros sorry Bendiros uh, dafts and stuff like that uh, but 
of those i don't want to talk much because i just know that they exist uh, so mm, if you know anything about them go ahead and write it in comments uh, i would gladly read this and i hope that my viewers too so uh, how do you play on this because like i said only actually only the native american uh, frame drums and celtic bodruns have this uh, crossbars to hold and this doesn't have anything so uh, as far as i know the irish bodrun is uh, held here uh, you hold your hand uh, your palm stretched on the inside of the skin and you hold it here to you know so it looks like this and you just mute the uh, mute, uh, mute the skin uh, in here but uh, this particular drum i hold in a bit different way uh, as you can see there's a cutaway in here so i place my thumb in here hold it and hold it like this you know the palm of my hand goes here down and it's and the thumb squeezes it kind of to the palm and i have it here and it's it's pretty secure hold and then i put it here on my arm uh, to the for the second point and it is uh, and this is how i how i hold it and i saw many people also hold it this way and I really like this uh, this hold because uh, it allows me to move the fingers of the left hand and treat them as kind of a um, muting mechanism, you know, a bit like a piano pedal. Uh, and, you, and you can really get creative with this. Uh, and it, this really makes a difference uh, in this drum. Uh, so the frame drum, as most of the other hand drums, has three very distinct sounds. Uh, it's the classic bass in here on the center it has a tone here about a uh, halfway i usually play here with a thumb and of course it has a slap on the rim but these were all open hits now if i hold my fingers here it sounds more like this and if I also add my thumb on the other side, pinching the skin, it sounds like this. So we can really get creative and move around. Also, you can just put one finger, for example, uh, or you know, press it harder to mute it even more. Like a dead-on mute now, I'm also pinching from the other side. So, this is how I use it usually, but you can play with different, uh, different you know, finger uh, configurations. This is uh, the bass with, uh, with the fingertips and the tone with, uh, with a thumb is just my personal technique. Uh, but I saw people playing many different ways. You can also use a stick. This is uh, usually how Irish bodruns are played, actually. You have a um, very distinctive stick to play it, drumstick. Mm, many Native American drums are played with sort of a mallet. Um, I prefer hand. I tried playing on this drum uh, with a stick and it just doesn't sound good and I'm not gonna show this. Um, and this is also probably a matter of tuning because this drum is very high tuned uh, and um, as you can see I cannot really change the tuning as you can with some of the frame drums. Mm, but I think it sounds just just as good. Probably with a mallet, you know, I played with a finger, so probably with a mallet it would sound um, decently. And also, fun fact, I mentioned uh, the um, uh, the jingle drum, and you can hear me trying to emulate this sound in my cover of How's the Heart by Nightwish, that should appear somewhere in here. So go ahead and watch it, I highly recommend it. Um, so, the, maybe a bit of history, because I missed this. This is probably one of the oldest drums in existence. Um, I mean, this is also a very straightforward drum. You have just a wooden hoop and a skin over it, so you can get probably simpler than that, especially uh, in this uh, Native American style of drums with the skin going around, but Mm, I think that this is how it all started, it's just that uh, in North America it just prevailed in this form and it changed in uh, in Europe and Asia and Africa. So you can't really get 
much simpler. Maybe Tom Toms, but mm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm talking about the old Tom Toms, not the modern uh, drum kit Tom Toms, obviously. Yeah. And like I said, this is very widely spread across most of the world. Uh, you can find frame drums pretty much everywhere. They sometimes are more common, sometimes are less common, but you can find them. And well, I don't really have much anything to say about the frame drum. It's just oldest drum, probably the oldest drum or one of the oldest. Widespread, very simple in construction, configuration. I think if uh, if you have uh, means you can and skill you may even try to do it do it yourself. I mean I don't know how how precise it would be or in, but I found many tutorials also in the web especially in this overstretched skin in the back uh, version because here the mounting to to the rim may be a bit tricky. Um, I mean, if you want to to just keep it uh, in a single tune, then maybe not. But uh, if you want to make it tunable, it's gonna get tricky. But as far as I know, most of the frame drums are not really tunable, except of the ones going uh, behind. Okay, so now uh, a little bit about the technique. A bit dive, let's dive a bit deeper into that. So, like I said, I use the tip of my fingers for the bass, um, and for mo and for most of the times when you play around this, you want to use the tip of the fingers uh, because it produces a very soft and mellow sound. Listen here. If I were to play it with my nails, which I can also do that, uh, but then it makes the sound very sharp. And I'm not saying it's bad. No, no, no. Play around. Um, but I just don't use it much and I haven't seen it used much. Honestly, at this point I'm experimenting myself, so let's check how it would sound. Hmm, quite nice. Uh, okay, so this and like I said, I use thumb also here. Usually here to get the tone because uh, this is just how naturally my hand uh, locates itself on the, on, the, uh, on the skin of the drum, you know, fingers here, thumb here. But as you can see, the sound is a bit different. With a thumb, it gets much deeper. Um, and another thing is, uh, and I used this uh, recently in my cover of Three Martolot, um, I also mute the drum sometimes with here, with, uh, with my wrist. Or, no, not wrist, but however this part of hand is called. Uh, put it in here. And now you get this very distinctly muted sound. It's a bit different than when you mute it down here. Yeah, and this is also one of the things I really like about this drum. Uh, Many different places around the head uh, has uh, a bit different, have a bit different sound, and when you spread out your fingers, you can really take very different sounds. Because also, look, if you have the same place from the center, it sounds different in here, in here, and in here. So with this fluttering or however it's called, you can get really nice tremolo sound. A nice roll. Mm, I don't think I use this in any, in any cover. Maybe in gentle in one of the gentle storms, but I am not sure. Go check. Um, so uh, that's and also uh, speaking of the gentle storm covers in the storm, I also did this fluttering here on the bass. This is just faster. It was faster for me then than using this. So I did. this thing uh, and this is another reason why the frame drum is very creative drum in my opinion it's a great vessel for creativity because like I said this is very simple and straightforward drum this is just a skin on a wooden hoop well isn't this how every drum is but because of this simplicity you can really play around get creative and really invent your own techniques and playing styles and this is also why I love this 
I recently used it more often as a replacement for a drum kit than I use my Cajon that you also know I own. So yeah, if you ever have a chance to get hold of the frame drum, I highly recommend it. I think this is very mm, underrated drum because uh, you can really get a lot of things from it. Even though this is very simple, but absolutely playing on this is not simple. I mean, it can be simple if you want to, but it can get really complex if you want to. So thank you for this. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you to death. I see that um, I'm way, lo way over 15 minutes long in this video. I know this one is a little bit chaotic um, because I'm actually recording this a little bit on the spot. And, but I really wanted to get this vlogs going um, and I think we would make it... Tell me in the comments if you like the format first of all. I promise next one will be a little bit less chaotic. Um, and I wanted to make it like every other week. We will get the vlog, cover, vlog, cover. Although maybe the second vlog of the month I will show you some tutorials uh, how to play certain songs. Um, well, for which I already played, by the way, because, um, from what I covered. S uh, so tell me what do you think about it, and uh, see you next week with this time a cover. Oh, and by the way, I can I already have to tell you that uh, in the ne two weeks next time, it will it would mean a, a tutorial that I just mentioned. But since there will be an anniversary of pretty important musical event to me. Um, I will make a special cover um, out of the regular schedule. So stay tuned for that and uh, the first week of uh, February we will start off uh, with a tutorial and um, I'm thinking about uh, making a tutorial actually with a bot run uh, out of either a Gentle Storm song or one of the songs from Cirque du Soleil because as you may have noticed I did the summer with Cirque 2020 thing. Um, I hope of making this a uh, yearly thing and I used frame drums totally in a totally different way. So maybe we will make a part two of this. So tell me what you think. Uh, Katsu, bugs out.